The Blackmagic web presenter HD at first glance might just seem like an upgraded model of the original web presenter with its familiar one third rack unit design and that webcam output. However, it's a bit of a departure and a reimagined look at what's needed to go live these days. Hey everybody, I am John Barker from Here to Record and in this episode of Show and Tell, we're taking a look at the Blackmagic web presenter HD. Let's get into it. In the interest of full disclosure, Blackmagic has sent some stuff to the channel in the past, but this one I bought with my own money. In a nutshell, the web presenter HD is for getting your production online. Just like the old model, it has a USB webcam output for bringing your production into things like Zoom or Skype or even OBS. But this time it has a built-in encoder as well, so you can send your stream off to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and services like that. And it's also fully packed with other neat features like this monitoring display output, 12 gig SDI input for accepting signals up to 2160p60, and phone tethering to stream over your 4G or 5G connection. The unit itself fits nicely in a one-third rack size where you can mount up to three of these devices next to each other in a rack. At the front we have a USB connection, a few control buttons, and a small confidence monitor for checking signals and streaming status. Flipping around the back is the rest of the connections. Here we have multiple power options, a network port, USB for webcam out, monitor SDI and HDMI output, SDI in and SDI loop out. It is important to note at this point that it is SDI input only, so if you want to bring in a HDMI source, you will have to convert that to SDI in order to bring it into the web presenter HD. So how does it work? To get the device running, I just need to power it up, attach a network cable and a video source. With all of that connected, I can see my video and audio preview on the front panel. From here, I can browse some menus like the setup and streaming options. And here in the setup menu, I have some options for audio meter types and networking settings. Then over in this live stream section, I can choose things like the destination, the streaming quality, and the streaming standard. Within the stream standard, I can choose auto, so whatever's connected to the device will be what's streamed, up to 1080p60. Or if I'm on a network with a pretty bad upload speed, I could set this to something like 720p30, and then be a bit happier about what I'm pushing out to the internet. And while you can attach a source up to 2160p60, the highest streaming option is 1080p60. I'm not really sure if that's a limitation of the device and the encoder, or if someday they could unlock a 4K60 streaming mode, but for my use case, 1080p60 is more than enough. At this point, I'd really recommend switching over to the PC or Mac and using the software instead to control the device. So launching the setup software, I can already see the web presenter HD pop up because it's already on my network. So I'll go in and configure it. The built-in destinations are listed in the platforms dropdown. Choosing one of these like YouTube, entering a streaming key, and then pressing on air gets me online pretty fast. Back on the front panel, I can see that I'm on air and the status is okay. And over here in the YouTube control center, I can see my feed is coming in nicely. On the front panel, you have this lock button and pressing and holding that for a few seconds will actually lock the front panel. And this will help you avoid stopping the stream accidentally or anything like that. You can see here as I press off, it's not actually working. I'll just hold lock for a few more seconds and all the buttons become active again. I think one of the coolest and most eye-catching parts of the device is this monitor output. I can see this being super useful on a big screen in your production area as sort of a confidence that you're actually streaming something and sending it to the web. To get this working, you just have to connect up a HDMI or SDI monitor to the outputs on the back. On the left-hand side, you can see some helpful things to tell you where you're streaming to at the top. And then below that, you have video, which shows the last five seconds of video. Below that, you can see the last six seconds of audio and how that was coming through. And there's lots of stats in there that I'm not gonna quite get into in this video. There's this big preview here of what you're actually sending out, and you can see some audio meters to see what you're sending in terms of audio. I've just pulled out the network cable on this device, and what you're seeing below is the cache is starting to fill up because the data can't find its way to YouTube. But reattaching that cable means that the data can find its way to YouTube, and all the cache gets pushed up there. If the audience is watching live, they will see a weird little uh, buffering for a while, but on demand, it actually plays back pretty smoothly. The Web Presenter HD does come with a few pre-configured destinations, but you can add your own through the software. In the description below, you'll find a link to a template XML file that you can use. And in there, you just fill out the details that you want to add. And then over in the PC or Mac app, you can add that as a streaming destination. So here I have my template XML document, and I'm just filling in some details of where I want to stream to. And then over on the app, I can add that as a custom streaming platform. I do wish this was a little more easy and a little more intuitive, but it does work so you can give it a go yourself. As an alternative or even as a backup, you can connect your phone to the Web Presenter HD and use its internet to stream. I can have both connected at the same time and if the internet on one dies, it will fail over to the other. So here I am streaming via ethernet and I have my phone attached as a backup. 
When I pull out that Ethernet cable on the web presenter HD, it will switch over to the mobile connection and just keep on streaming. It does take a few seconds to jump over, but it works nicely. One nice upgrade from the previous model is that the webcam output was previously only 720p and now it's up to 1080p. So with it attached to a computer, it does pop up as a webcam within Zoom or Skype and all those kind of tools. All right, let's power through a few final notes of things that I really wanted to mention in this video. You can actually adjust the streaming quality while you're on air, which is nice for internet connections that are maybe a little bit flaky and you want to pull back in terms of what you're sending out to the internet. This call button, it doesn't do anything right now. The manual says it will do something someday, but we'll see what that actually means. If you happen to have an ATEM streaming bridge lying around or you have one in your setup, you can stream to that from the web presenter HD. The first thing I really like about this device is the multiple input formats like 720 all the way up to 4K60 and the ability to stream in 720 or 1080p. I also really like this monitor output. I think it's great for confidence. I think it's great for monitoring. I think it looks really good. And I like that they kept the webcam output and even upgraded it to 1080p. I can see this being super useful for many productions that use Zoom or things like that. Some of the cons of this device, it's a shame they took away the multi-input switching. It would have been nice to have one HDMI, one SDI, and the ability to switch between the two. There's also no audio inputs on this device, which was a really good thing to have in the previous version. You had a few audio input options, but now all of your audio should be embedded via that SDI input. And that brings us to price. Currently it's in the £460 range to the $500 range, depending on your local price and taxes and stuff. I think it's pretty fair for a device like this, which sits nicely with the bigger end SDI switchers. Maybe if you compare it to something like the ATEM minis, then it can seem pretty expensive. And just to wrap things up, if you're looking at this device and wondering, well, why would I even want this? I have an ATEM Mini Pro that does loads of streaming options and all that good stuff. And maybe it's not quite the device for you. If you look at some of the larger ATEM switchers or bigger switchers in that market, you'll see that they don't have streaming built in or recording or anything like that. So this would fit nicely beside those and potentially whatever comes out in the next few months from Blackmagic, I have no idea, but I'm imagining a refresh of their middle to top tier. And uh, in those cases, I think there'll be no streaming or recording built in. And instead you would pair those devices with a streaming encoder just like this. So the future might see this being used more and more, but for right now, it's a pretty interesting way of getting your stream online off to YouTube or into a video conferencing app like Zoom or Skype or things like that. So thanks for watching this video. If there's anything you think I missed, I'd love to do a follow-up video in the future. So do let me know in the comments below this video. And all the best, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.